Sit. Sit, Bobby. Good boy. Good sit. Um, he is. He is not eating toilet paper. Well, he's good. not pulling it off the. Ring. He's, he's not stealing paper off the table. Are you? Are you still using the e collar to keep him from getting into things that? The e collar is on him all the time. Good. You're and one of the few. I don't have the control. Right. With me. I don't have to have the control with me. If the right. collar is on, mm -hmm. he's good. Well, and that's that is one of those things because they can actually hear the the electrical workings of the collar right. on their neck whenever it's powered on, mm -hmm. and so it's a little bit of a constant reminder. And that's not loud, and it's not going to bother them or anything. But it's a little bit of a constant reminder, like, hey, this is still a possibility. You could get a correction for something if you do something wrong. And so they tend to behave a lot better. And I, I don't exactly understand why everybody is in such a hurry to get it off. It's a stigma thing. They, they're like, they just think of e-collars as bad, and so I want it off as soon as possible. The collar being on mm -hmm. doesn't do a thing to him. Right. Except psychologically. Right. I don't have the control in my hands. Mm -hmm. I think it's over there on the counter, but I'm not <laughs> sure. And it's okay. He was outside this morning. He has the collar on. I did not take the control out with me. Right. We went out on the deck. I said no bark, and he went to. He looked at me, and then he went to the yard, and he ran. He played with the dogs next door. The school buses went by. The garbage truck came, mm -hmm. um, and the handyman that you just met mm -hmm. came in the back gate, and there was no barking. There was no. So, no, nothing. so are you t are you saying no bark as like preemptive before he even yes. starts? Yes. And and you and he's and he's understanding that. He seems to be understanding it because he has he doesn't. Yeah. I mean, he's a smart guy. He just acts stupid. <laughs> well, that that's the thing. I get a lot of people who come who call me up and they're like, "Oh, I got a super dumb dog," and it's a standard poodle, and I'm like, "Then you don't have a super dumb dog. Like, you have a dog that's smart." Because smart dogs make a lot of conclusions, but they also make a lot of wrong conclusions. Well, and that makes that makes a big difference. People think they're dumb, whereas a Labrador doesn't make any conclusions almost ever in its life. And once it makes one, it sticks with it forever, but they're just, they just run all on instinct. What you so. had was a super dumb mom. <laughs> you just didn't, I was so frustrated and upset with him. Not, I didn't know what I was gonna do. Not, not dumb, just you were, you just had communication issues. And oh, we yeah. and and we and we worked through that, and well, so now we're we're to the point where we got to figure out something extra to do to make it better because we got more lessons left over. Raising my <laughs> raising my voice to him doesn't do any good. Hey, say that again into the camera. Raising my voice to the dog does no good. Okay, you're gonna be on a commercial now. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> that is one of the biggest things that I that I tell people is raising your voice has some effect but only for a little while and if you continue to holler at a dog then they continue to uh they continue to get less and less affected over time as you see the mom out at the store who's just screaming at her kids all Doesn't the time work. and the kids don't care at all it's because right. mom's always screaming that's right you know and same with you know same with anybody else but that's that's one of the big principles it's like don't only use vocalization and and um pitch and uh, intensity in your voice when you absolutely have to. When there's something Otherwise really, really wears wrong. Out. Right, and a lot of people try to do that because they're like, oh, well, it's the gentlest way to do it. It hurts the dog the least amount. And then what happens is you just have a dog that offends 50 times. Hurting that, let me turn this. Right. Right here. Um, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't even know what to, what to say to that. Hurting the dog is not the object. The object right. is to get his attention. Right. And unfortunately, shouting for this guy in particular doesn't, doesn't work. He, he looks at me like I'm stupid and proceeds to do what he wants to do. Yeah, and, <laughs> and a little bit uh, of what ends up happening is, is the dogs. So the dogs only use vocalization to add energy to a situation. And so whenever they're already barking. And they're already excited. And, I'm yelling, and then bark. we go, hey, Fluffy, stop doing that. Hey, don't do that. Hey, stop. You know, then what yeah. you're doing is you're just barking with the dog. That's and right. it's adding extra energy. Just like when one dog starts barking, the other one starts barking. Mm -hmm. And then they both bark a whole lot together. It's the same thing. And people don't think about it in those terms because they think they're saying actual words that the dog should understand. Mm -hmm. Newsflash, dogs don't speak English. So, well, sorry, guys. I, I wonder. They, they understand a lot. 
They do over time. But the key is, is that you have to say a word and then you have to let your physical actions match the word. Right. And that has to happen repeatedly. And then the dog will figure out words and what they mean and what they signal. I used, um, one of my mom's friends uh, had a dog that if he said Jeep, the dog would run and get into the Jeep and would stay in the Jeep for an hour and a half mm -hmm. until the guy actually showed up to take him for a drive. And he knew for 100% certain. Now, this was a really smart dog who made very advanced conclusions, but the guy never taught it to him. He just, he, mm -hmm. the dog knew that he said Jeep before we got into the Jeep and it was his favorite thing. So you got high motivation, you've got a very intelligent dog and you have a word that is followed by an action. And even when it's followed by long periods of time, sometimes it'll still come in. So, but the key is, is that it, there has to be a physical action attached to it and a lot of times people just keep talking to their dogs and don't say anything and don't do anything and then the dog never figures anything out and they think the dog's dumb it's like no it doesn't speak english o in the c-a-r <laughs> is a big thing that i don't say out loud unless right. because that is immediate so here's a, here's an interesting thing for you the same way that that became that he understands that g-o in the c-a-r means that we're going to do that mm -hmm. you can also take that meaning away by saying it a whole bunch of times and not doing really? it yeah so if you have one of those things and it becomes a burden to you okay. that you say or, hey we want to you yeah. know go for a ride and stuff like that and then the dog is like oh my gosh we're gonna go oh, yeah. oh wait a minute you know, no we're not then then you 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 say it all the time and then all of a sudden the word loses its meaning because the dog has this conclusion that whenever mm -hmm. they say this that we end up going for a ride mm -hmm. and so if all of a sudden we say it and we don't go for a ride and then we say it again and we don't go for a ride and the percentage of times mm -hmm. that we go for the ride it is becomes the small percentage then they're like oh i must have been mistaken that so i guess i didn't i guess i didn't really understand that properly and even though it does mean that mm -hmm. we can take that meaning away so basically you know? repetition yeah just like people have changed the meaning of words in today's culture you know where they think that ignorant means that you're being nasty to somebody and it yeah. doesn't it means that you are uneducated on a subject exactly and but they just changed it and they just keep using it and then now it like it eventually gets put in the dictionary as an improper usage because people just keep using it improperly and then that becomes the norm well, same thing with the dog yeah so. I, I don't know if you noticed a minute mm -hmm. ago the cat ran from over here <laughs> in did. there yeah I was watching and he's right yeah there. he never he never reacted so cool part about it is is he yeah. is over the issue but the cat has not forgotten yet because I watched him and he came by and he moved gingerly to here and, and then, then he went then he went, ooh, and then got yeah. back, and then took off the other well, direction. Right. But he and he slowed up when he got past the dog. But yeah. he's like this. This area is still tentative well, area. But that's great. That means and and because that's more enticing to him than if the cat just was over it and walked by calmly. Right. Is him running off is the exciting part. And so you you are obviously showing pretty darn good control. Sometimes it's not like that. Right. You know we have we have our moments, mm -hmm. but. Honestly, most of the time, unfortunately, they both want to drink out of the bathroom sink. Mm -hmm. And they both want to do that at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so the cat gets over it and runs away. And that's when that's when we have a a little bit of a chase issue. But... Yeah. And then all of a sudden something else happens that's exciting. Then they get even more excited. And I, honestly, at, at this point, I say leave it. Mm -hmm. And he... Pretty much comes trotting right back. Well, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I. I mean, that, that's that's always a great thing. You are on the dog. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, buddy. Dog on it. Got my tail. Got him. Got my tail. That's that. Uh, go ahead. I, I, I don't remember what I was going to say now. I just. I. Oh, with the uh, the the bark, mm -hmm. the the inner the the shock collar. Mm -hmm. um, if I do have to use it right he immediately comes and hides behind me right. he doesn't realize i'm doing it because he comes i think because he comes to me for protection so let me ask you what exactly do you typically use it for when you use it if he is on the cat and wanting to wanting to play which means bounce with both feet on the cat which we don't 90 pounds right. and 20 pounds doesn't work 
um, then I will give him a short, short zap if he will not stop. And he immediately comes to me and sits behind me. Mm -hmm. um, outside, if he happens to start uh, after a barking at, at a dog next door or barking at a person and he won't stop, then I will give him a short, just a short zap and, and say, look, you come. Right. And, you know, even if I don't call him to come, he... Uh, Generally will come and run behind me or get under my chair mm -hmm. for protection. I yeah. Think. So that th there are there there's a lot of good things, and from what you just described, there's nothing particularly wrong with the situation. One of the tenets that I do tend to teach is is that it's very important for the dog to understand why it's happening. So, but that can be attached to a number of different things. It can either be attached to the word that you say to give them the signal that they need to stop doing it. It's basically a warning, and I always use the word no. Mm -hmm. You know, um, leave it could be a thing, but it, it's, it, but me personally, I tend to use the word no. Keep yeah. doing it if it's working, it's by working. the way. Um, and, but you can, it could be attached to a location. If you're not supposed to get in the trash can, and every time you get near the trash can, and I know we've talked about this a little bit, if every time you get near the trash can it corrects you then the trash can is what is causing it if his yeah. state of mind if he only gets corrected in a certain state of mind which is rambunctious mm -hmm. overly excited energy then he can learn that his state of mind is what's correcting it and um and a lot of people get stirred up about uh, about doing that because we're not as explicitly uh telling the dog what it is but the good part about it is is the egos actually do help the dog settle down and I, I, I think I understand the biological reason for that, like the actual things that are happening in the chemistry that, that, and I think it has to do with the endorphins and the norepinephrine and stuff and the adrenaline that is produced whenever you get corrected. Cause uh, Nikola Tesla used to skip coffee in the morning. He mm -hmm. would actually shock himself for, um, for, to cause his adrenaline gland to pump, which is exactly why we drink coffee or your caffeine or something <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, they have the coffee. Right. Well, you know, um, the 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 uh, the electricity is less expensive, but <laughs> but um, and and I like really good coffee. But, um, but that adrenaline, it's the same thing as like whenever people smoke a cigarette and it helps them to calm down. It's because mm -hmm. their adrenaline starts pumping mm -hmm. and allows their brain to catch up with the mm -hmm. scenario. And so that is my theory so far uh, of why that ends up happening. And I'm pretty sure it's right. But we'll, I'll have to do some more research to, to find that out. But um, Trash cans are something else that mm -hmm. we talked about early on because he yeah. was stealing trash, stealing paper, stealing whatever in the trash can. Right. And that has stopped. Good. Thanks to Excellent. you and your... <laughs> Well, that's good. So now, let, now that we've talked about all that, let's let's talk about what we can do going forward. What would you like to add to the repertoire? Do you know um, what things are you still struggling with? Uh, exuberance when he's out on a leash and sees things. That's mm -hmm. that is th that's still a fear mm -hmm. for me because he's taken me down so many times. Right. You know, I, I I think when I first called you, I said, this dog's going to kill me dead if you don't do something. You said those exact words, if I remember correctly. And, I, you know, I can't tell you the number of times that I was dragged through the yard because I wasn't smart enough to let go of the leash. Um, but if he, if he takes off, I'm not a small person, mm -hmm. but if he takes off, he's only about 90 pounds, but all, all four legs going, I, I, yeah, I he's, can't He's I four can't legs, stop 90 him. pounds of a boy, you know, young, young, pure, pure energy. young man strength. And so, uh, now, he doesn't look like he would ever do anything like that right now. Um, he's, he's being, uh, he, he's a whole different dog than he was. He said, have a kiss. Thanks. Good boy. And shake. Is it, does he shake on purpose or is he just pawing at me? Yeah, a little of both. Yeah. A little, we're working on that one. But you know, I don't want him pawing at me. What's up with this? You got a little, you got a little overbite. That's okay. He's he's a mess. Won't cost won't won't cause you too much. Problem. It doesn't keep him from eating. Oh, Thanks. Loki, no. Um, is it, do you, would you prefer him not to give kisses? No, I not that at all. It's just I'd prefer that nope. not they be welcomed. You know, I he doesn't. Nope. No. No. Nope. No. 
Thank you. Good point. There you go. So, no. If you take take away the affection, mm -hmm. if you've given him the affection, that's what he wants. And whenever you take it away, he paws at you. Mm -hmm. um, you can add correction at that point in time, which could be something as simple as just coming at him a little bit. Um, or or you could take the effect, if you're still petting him, you could take the affection away when he does something like kiss or paw. That is not a really huge offense, but you just take away the positive and that can be enough correction in and of itself. You know, honestly, yeah. you're not gonna, you're not gonna believe it, but when he's doing that to me, mm -hmm. all I have to do is give him the look. Mm -hmm. Stops. Well, that's how dogs work is they they look at each other and they'll give eye contact and they'll give intensity as a correction And I mean like as you get as you get further along in your journey with him that becomes that becomes a very good tool Like with my dogs, I, I'll say something and then they'll they'll ignore me a little bit and I'll just give them the look and I'll be like good and, and then that and then the dog goes, okay, I understand and and, and the, it gets to be a speechless type of uh, interaction and that's just whenever you get that really good bond and connection with your dog. He's so. he's becoming He's becoming a better dog. I didn't believe you when you told me <laughs> um, He will You're he's not, not two one. yet. Yeah, he is not two yet And so they say once they once they hit about two and a half they really they really turn into into decent dogs this breed um but you know, I don't even know really. He's he's got Labrador, he's got or Chocolate Lab, mm -hmm. he's got Poodle, he's got Golden Retriever and Poodle. So I, I don't know what to expect out of him. We call, we call him a quadru uh, quadruple doodle. He's a mess. <laughs> he's a mess. He's doing yes. great though. I'm I'm, I'm Luke, happy to so I'm happy to see, especially with all the chaos that you've had in your life in the, the last <laughs> while and all of the different uh, challenges that you've that you've had. It's I mean. It, it just goes to show how good communication and, and a little bit of follow through makes makes for a very happy, a healthy. He seems to be balanced pack. You know. I, I had last night. I really was not wanting him to to be all over me, and so I ended up last night with all of his special toys on the floor at my feet, mm -hmm. and his ninety pound butt in my lap. <laughs> yeah. He brought me everything. And then climbed on my lap and and sat there. He probably he slept for maybe an hour, hanging over the edge of the chair with his butt in my mm -hmm. lap. So when he brings you stuff, does he bring it because you've asked for it, or does he just bring he, and offer you things? He brings me things. Okay. So yeah. I, I was wondering because if you got to the point to where, because I mean, a retrieve is something that you can spend a lot of time teaching, mm -hmm. and that's fine. But if you have a retrieve, sometimes they come by accident, especially yeah. when you've got golden retrievers and labradors mixed in. Sometimes dogs just want to do it, and if you Look, can. Come. If you get if you get that Good accidentally, boys. then you can start to uh, you can start to teach him different uh, items and teach him to bring you different items. Um, and that's actually a fairly simple exercise. It's just lots of repetition, He's but it's good mental work for a dog like him, and that's what he probably needs more than anything. And what He's most dogs really do. good about bringing his ball. Yeah. And you know, I don't want to start it right now. Right. But I will. I will tell him to get his B A L L, and mm -hmm. he will immediately find it and bring it to me and I'll just throw it over my shoulder backwards over here towards the mm -hmm. door and he's it's it, over and over and over again yeah he's never tired of it no well and what you can also do is you can Come. take it and you can you can let so him know said, like for instance like he's still got uh, like have, have you been working on the climb command much like do you use that at all I haven't like with the couch and stuff honestly Luke with everything that's been going on I forgot that's fine I mean, it's not, it, all of the stuff that I teach are just tools that you can use if they if they're appropriate. Excuse and if you don't use them and you want to let them fall off, that's all fine. Good. I, I don't have any problem with that. I honestly have okay, kitty, good job. No. And go do what you think. What a do good what you boy. think. What a good boy. Let me come up here and see, huh? So yeah, that's, that's good. good. Boy. Now um, good we can boy. definitely uh, help with the darting off type of type of thing with the walking um that's that's not a big deal um what if you if if the prong collar in and of itself is not enough motivation for him to not hit the end of the leash which sometimes happens when it you isn't. get when you get a you can actually time that to where the e-collar correction comes at the same time as he hits the end of the leash and you don't have to wait for him to run after a squirrel to do it as you do the walking around in the backyard type of stuff mm -hmm. like we've done mm -hmm. and you just get it to where you give the um, signal 
saying, no, that's not what I want you to do, you know, mm -hmm. which I just use the word nope. Mm -hmm. And um, if he continues and persists and goes to the end of the leash, then he hits the end of the leash. Now, at that at the same time as he's hitting the end of the leash, you can add the e-collar correction and eventually transition away from the prong collar altogether if you make sure that he understands that you are causing the correction after you say nope. If you say nope and he doesn't change his ways, then the correction comes. If you say nope and he changes his ways, the correction doesn't come. And, but if he gets used to hearing that word nope and knowing that that means that's my warning that I need to change what I'm doing, then we can, if we get him associated to that, mm -hmm. then the prong collar doesn't need to necessarily stay. Okay. I think that for walks, it's not a bad idea, especially if you're worried about getting pulled over. It adds that little bit of extra incentive, but the e-collar also does. And eventually you get to the point with the e-collar that you can have a nice loose leash. Mm -hmm. And whenever he sees something, you say, nope, and he will likely stop before he hits the end of it. And he knows that if he doesn't, that right. the e-collar correction comes, but the e-collar correction can still come prior to that because he understands that you correct it. And then we get more into an off-leash type of scenario where you never have the capacity to get pulled over ever again. Off-leash? Yeah. No. Well, you can. Ah, uh, that's... I, I, I'm not comfortable with that. Well, I mean... I, I, I don't trust him enough. I, I get that, but um, and, and, and it's your decision because he's your dog, but that's the thing is, is when you start... When you start working with um, with the e-collar, what you start doing is, is you give him more and more leash, and you still have the end of it, mm -hmm. and then you start communicating with him verbally mm -hmm. and make sure that he is responding to you verbally. And if he ends up going a month and he never misses one of your cues and he listens every time at the end of a 10-foot long or a 20-foot long leash, then you start to let go of the leash and realize that you don't actually need it anymore. So you let the dog earn the trust first. You know what I mean? But that's up to you. If you want to do it, if you don't want to do it, that's all. Well, we do have a leash law here. So right. that's, you know, that. I'm a, and I'm a quite, rebel. quite honestly, huh? I said I'm a rebel. I know you are. I knew that from the get go. Um, I don't have an objection to leaving the prong collar on. That's fine. It doesn't hurt him. It doesn't hurt him. I, you Thank know, you. Say that again into the camera. It doesn't hurt him. <laughs> the prong collar. <laughs> he doesn't react to it about half the time. Yeah. And it doesn't hurt him. If it hurt him, he would he would react better. Right. Um, but it does help me to hold on to him because he slows down. Right. Yeah. He, he slows down. It just After, pinches. It's not a choke chain. Well, technically, it doesn't even pinch uh, because the, if it's if it's sized properly, it can't pinch um, because those prongs would it, you would need to have looseness in the if collar they they in order for together. it to come together and pinch. All it does is just constrict, and the prongs are actually spread wide to distribute the sure. pressure even wider. Sure. So it's actually like a like a two and a half inch pressure band as opposed to like a flat collar which right. is like five eighths right you know uh or whatever width it happens to be um so the people don't really people don't understand the prong collars and they think they're like torture devices and i i don't blame them but they're actually more kind than just using a regular old flat buckle collar. that does not hurt you <laughs> no he don't care but it got his attention didn't so it hurt. cool well, um, yeah, if you want to, then we can start working on getting the e-collar associated to with the walking. Nope. Nope. The associated with the walking, that way he never hits the end of the leash. And you can actually communicate with him and get him to stop and turn around prior okay. to. Um, we can start that out in the front yard, or you can go out in the backyard if it makes you feel more comfortable. I prefer the back where the fence is. Right. Um, but we don't ever let go of the leash. Right. We, okay. we just keep a certain amount of leash. Okay. Do you still have your 20 footer? Uh, I believe I do. Or a couple. Oh, you still, got one of the, you still got one of the thin ones. They don't uh, sell them anymore, man. They don't? Well, you, you not, brought not that. From, not Here from where, not where I buy them. Because um, I get them at the, at your, at, at to your do regular it? box store. Oh, yeah, we're, I suppose we could probably try that. Um, I generally just break them. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, yeah, you just fine. Thank you. But uh, yeah, so um, this is this is the beauty of a twenty foot long leash is um, you can have a leash on them as insurance because that's what I think of leashes are. Leashes are insurance, not not steering wheels. Um, right. 
and but you can let the dog have more range so that they okay. can make decisions. And then once they start making the decisions properly, and they never get to the end of the leash, then you know that the dog is actually listening to your words, not just getting dragged, or not getting dragged around by the leash because right. the leash is short. And that's one of the biggest uh, battles that I tend to uh, have to deal with people is getting people to realize that the leash is caught. In certain circumstances, the leash is exactly the right answer. And then after a certain point, the leash is the biggest hindrance as well. Because if I'm always walking him around at the end of a tight leash like this, mm -hmm. then he's not actually learning it. He's not making right. any decisions. But when I have 20 foot worth of leash and the dog is still stuck right to my side, then you know for a 100% fact that the dog is actually doing this because they're choosing to and because they know you want them to as opposed to um, the leash is only two foot long and they don't have any other choice, you know. Boy. You need to, at some point we give the dog plenty of choices and we communicate with them and see if they actually uh, follow along, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah, let's 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 check it out from the back. Come on. You cut off your ponytail since I saw you last. I think you cut some off. No. Look I, shorter. Uh whoa. Okay, so I cut off. Yeah. I cut off the hair from the oh, back okay. here. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's what it is. Yeah. That's All what right. It was. I uh I it, it's. It was, I was ended up breaking it more, pulling it all together sure, sure. than, uh, the, than it, and it was just wasn't working. Sure. So, come on. Or the pet or whatever, he, um, the pet or the treat, well, mostly treats, but the treat will help him to remember what happened just prior to that. So he'll, he'll make the conclusion faster. It's like, I don't know why you gave me a treat, but it, I only did these couple things right beforehand. Yeah. And and then they gave me a treat, so let me try it again, and then they'll try it, and then I'll give them a treat again, yeah. and then now like, now they'll make the connection in two events as opposed to in forty. You know what I mean? That's why we go outside and go potty treat. because we know when treat. when we go potty, then we get a cookie when what? we come in. Right. Free. Yeah, and even on such a long timeline. Free. Get up. Thank you. I don't want to. <laughs> well, technically, whenever it all comes down to it, free means you can do whatever you want. Um, if he is consistently not moving whenever you say free, uh -huh. then um, then I would make him move just to make sure that he understands that free means okay. you can move. Otherwise, if he doesn't understand that and he ends up getting up anyway, then he then he thinks he's breaking the command yeah. and not getting corrected for it. Okay. Therefore, confusing the command. So free, good boy. So, so whenever we're doing the walking thing, we start with a little bit of leash. Mm -hmm. like nothing super short um, and and then we just start moving around and I don't do much with this um, aside from like when aside from uh, we turn it down as low as it needs to be and whenever he hits the end of the leash then I time that with the correction at the same time walk so I did right there Good boy. So when I change direction I'll go ahead nope nope and I just want him to associate the end of the leash with the e collar correction as the same thing, okay. and then and, and then it'll get to the point where he starts to understand that no nope precedes hitting the end of the leash and the e collar correction, so therefore they must be the same thing. They must all be coming from the same person. So walk, walk, good boy. Same thing with a walk. When I say walk, I just leave out. You don't have to stand in the sun if you don't want to. That's okay. I'm watching. Yeah. It's okay. Nope. Good boy. Sit. Good dog. Walk. When I say walk, I just walk off, and if he hits the end of the leash, I add it down. Nope. Walk. Good boy. I don't know if he even feels that down on the lower level. He's got the car under there. Well, he's, he, he's feeling it. What? Nope. Nope. See, that, I have to turn it down. Um, now the difference will be, nope, sit, the difference will be how amped up the situation is, like if he's super excited he will feel less yeah. oh, of yes. it, oh, yes. um, and if he's really less sedentary then more will feel like unreasonable amount, you know, and it's just a matter of how much, how much excitement does he have in his system. I think we're doing something right, this is a 100% different dog than it was when you first met him. <laughs> good. I'm very happy to hear that he's a good boy. He just needed to learn how. Walk. Nope. Walk. Nope. Sit. So 
So when he's having trouble with the walk thing, just do a whole bunch of them in a row. So walk. Couple steps, then do it again. Walk. Just walk. You didn't hit the end that time, so nothing happened. Nope. 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 Are you tired, dude? No, he's confused as what he is at the moment. Nope. He hasn't figured it out yet. Good boy. He doesn't know why we're doing it. And with a smarter dog, sometimes you get that in training sessions. Nope. Because they assume that all of your the things that you're asking them to do are have a good reason to them. And this is too complex of a reason for them to understand. And so they're like, I don't understand why we would be walking and sitting and walking and sitting and walking and sitting. And so they, it, can, it can put them in a little bit more of a stress situation. And the good news is that wears off. And stress is not a bad thing if it goes away. It's only when it stays that it becomes unhealthy for us. Yeah. You know, the stress of... You know the stress of uh, like not being able to make the bills or something that stays with you all the time and that becomes right. very unhealthy right. but the stress of like hey there's a bobcat and you run away from it and you get all your the cortisol provides steroids to your thighs you mm -hmm. run as fast as you can and then you get away from it and then this then the stress goes away that's mm -hmm. actually very healthy for you so too little stress is also one of those things. So whenever we get into situations like this and he does get a little stressed out, we want to make sure that it doesn't go too high. But it's not a bad thing at all because um, it, it'll actually help him in the long run and it'll make him better at dealing with stress. It's the people who are the worst at dealing with stress are the ones who never deal with any. You know, so walk. Good boy. Now these things can be added to with some sort of a, with some sort of a reward. I don't usually use a ton of rewards when walking because walking has a tendency to be its own reward. What a good dog. There you go. Very good boy. Walking tends to be rewarding enough in and of itself. It's got its physical activity. It also has its serotonergic um, help because he's accomplishing what it is that we're asking of him and it makes him feel like he understands. But uh, walk. Good boy. All right. But. Uh, and then, of course, the travel, which is an instinct for dogs anyway. Nope. Nope. Oh, nope. Nope. <laughs> this will be easier for you because he wants to stay next to you. Yes, Sit. he does. That's just one, that's and, just and, one thing. And that's, that's perfectly fine. That'll, that'll work in your advantage. And so you'll give him even more leash. And so, But eventually, we get to the point where we do start, once he realizes what we want, then we can start giving him even more slack and letting him do it and he still doesn't hit the end of the, he still doesn't get any corrections until he hits the end of the leash. And that way he learns that he can prevent that thing from happening okay. by obeying the commands. And then we end up doing just fine. Walk. Good boy. All right. Then I give him lots of encouragement. So that first bit is just kind of like the crash course instructional part. Nope. Walk. And then afterwards, I give him more and more leash. Nope. Walk. Good boy. Good job. Nope. You better catch up. Good job. See, he avoided it. Yeah. Now, so here's the deal. If we leave the leash too short, then what ends up happening, sit. What ends up happening is the dog doesn't have enough time to overcome the stress once or twice and figure and, and figure out that he can make the right decision before because then they get stressed. And, and it's important that they get a little bit stressed just to make it important to them. But then after that, we need to give them some more slack so that they can go, I'll say walk and he'll go, uh, you know, like that, like bracing for it. And he's just like, oh wait, it didn't happen. Let me hurry up and catch up and I might be able to escape it. And then he does that a couple times and then he's like, oh, okay, this is an easily figured out situation. Yeah. And then, and then after that, then he stops stressing about it in the instance. The same thing is like whenever people get stressed out about math, they tend to be bad at math always, like forever, because they because at one point they got behind, and when somebody says math, they go. Ugh! They decided they couldn't, and they do can't it. think properly. And so what we want to do is we want to give them enough slack so that he can get over that <gasps> moment, make a good decision, and then those the, that 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 uh, 
that that seize up moment will start become shorter and shorter and shorter in a very short amount of time until it goes away altogether and then he'll just be paying attention and he'll be able to do it almost in his sleep you say walk and take off and he'll be like okay there I go and like I'm just barely even paying attention but I can do it so Loki walk And then we get more and more and more. Good boy. What a good dog. Nope. And I just use my words to instruct him a little bit more. But he has to pay attention to me. That's right. Then, nope. Sit. Good boy. And so he's just following the command. And you see, we're not dragging him around. And if he decided to go after something and everything, I'd have enough time to run this thing all the way up and correct him for it and make him stop. Um, before he hits the end of the leash and then we get to the point to where we can actually stop him verbally as opposed to having to do it physically yeah. looking at do you see him react to me yeah. like I, he thought I was gonna move and so he was preparing to move and uh, so and so then that becomes and eventually we get him to not have to hit the end of the leash at all because we we can correct if we need to but generally you don't have to because the dog goes no I know what happens after the nope and I would rather that not happen, so I'll just pay attention and do what I've told, and it'll only stress them out for a day or two, and then it'll go away, and then they get to the point where they actually just start doing the things that you want. Look, walk. Walk. You know, you go from nothing, nope. get to the point really quickly where I don't have to have any sort of security aside from like I can step on the leash if he right. decides not to do the thing and then you basically taught a heel in a few minutes you know but now I would ex I would advise you to stretch that out over oh, over yeah. time don't go don't go from one step one to th two to three to four to five no, like no. I just did no, no. take it and do step one for for a few days do step two for a few days and make sure that he because it's a learning situation for you. I've just been doing it for so long that it, right. well, that I learned to read it. I learned to read it better. That's but that, what I need to see. Yeah. So down. Down. Nope. Down. Good boy. So then we can start working on stays. Um, who's got the treats? Well, I don't <laughs> have, have any in my pants. I've got some in the house. You lost your glasses. So doing stays, super easy stuff. There's trainers out there that don't know how to teach a stay. It's the easiest thing in the world. Um, whenever I give him a command, it's the same thing. There's a positive if you do it right, there's a negative if you do it wrong. What I will do is, is I will change the rules in my own mind all at once. And we don't really want to do this, but if we're in a situation where sit means sit down and then get up and move in a few minutes, then we want to change that. Okay. Uh, we want that to not be the case. So what I'll do is I will um, I will start to put him in whatever position it happens to be. And down is the easiest one to learn, so you can start there. I, I keep this low, mm -hmm. but I start to step back. So the first time I'll do it, I'll, I'll get him right into this area. Um, and, and I'll tell him his sitter is down or whatever. And then I won't reward him. And he's like, why? Well, I don't know why else. What I do. Yeah, I don't know what I did. And then what's going to happen is, is I'm going to take a half step back. And then I will say, good. And I'll reward him. I'll take another step back. And this, I would stretch out over a period of time. I'm doing it quickly. Good boy. And then, provided he actually wants the treats. The other good part about it is, is if you get them nice and whooped out like this beforehand. Yeah. yeah. They accidentally get it right, and you end up making less corrections in the okay. long run anyway. And then I say, good. Well, he's going to sleep for an hour when you're done. Isn't that usually the case? Yes. It's because of the mental work. Yes. But we, we keep on coming back and giving treats, and I'm just doing this as an example. He can either have them or he can not. Maybe the squirrel will get them. Then I'll start turning halfway away, and then I'll say, good, and I'll reward him. Yeah. And then I'll scoot back again, and I'll turn halfway the other way. I'll say, good, reward him, and then I'll start turning all the way around. And I'll say good and reward him. And basically what I'm doing is I'm non-verbally asking him a whole bunch of questions. What are you going to do when I do this? What are you going to do whenever I yeah. sit down? What are you going to do whenever I do all this stuff? And when he does it wrong, you say, you, you calmly say no. 
and correct him and put him back. But if he does it right, then you say good. And then you go and you give him a reward. And so you're, you're, you're thinking about it as asking questions non-verbally and not asking questions verbally. And because the dog doesn't speak English, and so we have to ask all our questions non-verbally. What are you going to do when I do this? And then if he does it right, you go and you give him this physical reward. What that means to me is that I don't have to have company in the shower. In the shower? <laughs> yeah. 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 So the reason dogs do that is because whenever they are doing their necessities, which the shower yeah. seems like that to the dog, um, same thing with going to the bathroom, and whenever they're doing that out in the wild, they are at their most vulnerable state. So what they do is they sit there and they look at their buddy and they do their business and they watch the eyes of the buddy to see if the eyes go <gasps> like that. Yeah. And then they know that something's behind them because they can't be checking behind them while they're right. doing their business. Right. That's, that's why yeah. that is. That's why dogs follow you in the bathroom is they're trying to be your, your security. I haven't been to mm -hmm. the bathroom by myself since I, my first kid was born. Right. So, <laughs> and that's 46 years ago. Right. So that's, yeah, it's good to know. If it's not a problem, that's it's good a, to it, know. if it's not a problem, don't break it. If it is a problem, then, then make sure that they understand that this is not what you want and do that non-verbally. You know, and that's only... where the where, where the stick tends to help because you can keep them all the way out the bathroom door. Yeah, it's only a problem when he jumps in the shower or the tub with me. I, that, that, I draw the line there. Well, it's bath time. So, yeah. You gotta make the he's best a, He loves water. So. Right. Yeah, well, he's poodle. Poodles are water dogs. He's a mess. Yeah. He's exhausted now. He's doing so much better than I don't know how long we started, how long ago we started, but he's just a different dog. Well, it's been a while, but we didn't it's do him very... Out. Yeah, like, they were, like, uh, they were weeks if not months in between yeah well we started I way before that. the whole covid thing right i couldn't help that it yeah was... well it's, it is what it is but yeah. i'm glad to see that even when we stretch it out that we're still getting the results well we're still doing mm -hmm. and that that ends up being the thing so um that that that's where and i know you that that's where earlier, i have anxiety you were like yeah. i don't want him i don't want to think about him being off leash dog he's like he's off leash in his mind but he's not off leash in your mind because all you have to do is step on the leash. Okay. And once you step on the leash, you have full control. And it doesn't matter if you're strong or not. It doesn't matter if you have good balance or not. The worst case scenario is the leash slides underneath you. And that almost never happens. Okay. I mean, like, it happened more with my 11-year-old than most people. But even him, he can stop my Mastiff just by stepping on the leash. So um, he won't have enough force to really... Uh, get it to where you have lost complete control right um, and then you can trust the dog more to do more things and he can actually prove himself to you that he'll listen and you use your your verbals and uh, and the e-collar to enforce it and then you end up with uh, then you end up with an off-leash dog in a very short period of time I've taken dogs free come free Loki come come on come 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 here dude come here doodle dude I think he's Come. good for it. There you go. Yeah, that's it. Come on. Come on. He's about had it, I think. Oh yeah, he's tu he's tuckered out. It's like every time this gone, guy comes, dude. he he that's and that's the thing is they end up very satisfied despite the fact that they're under more stress. When they get done with it, they're just like, oh, I'm so relaxed. All of the tension is gone. But I'm glad I had it. It's sort of like going out and playing a sport or something. Yeah. It's a lot of stress in mental physical all of those different things but you get done with it and you're just like man i just got done with six games of basketball i get some food in me and then i don't need anything more than to sit on the couch and relax you know and that's the same thing that the dogs do so that kind of that that kind of productive stress ends up being exactly the ticket for a very peaceful dog and most people want to go run their dog five or six miles, and that just makes a very fit dog that can give you all sorts of extra energy. This old lady's not, not going there. So. <laughs> well, me either. I mean, me either. And I used to have to do that every day, and I do not want to anymore. I like my, I like my belly. This is usually what I get when, right. when I've had to correct him with the shock. Right. Is he's right back and sitting on me. Yeah. He's, he's on my foot. Right. So. Well, to be touching. And, and a little bit of, of that will go away when he it, it has a more full understanding of what is happening with the e-collar. Um, right now, he knows how to prevent it by and large, but when he really understands that you're the one doing it most of the time, then he'll, he'll, 
he will probably be less of that, like, I'm going to tuck up underneath you. The fact that he's sitting you here. freaking out about the Lost One video. We can edit that out. <laughs> we won't. The so. fact that he's sitting here with two strangers in the yard. Mm -hmm. And he's sitting here. Yeah. Is, is phenomenal. That's great. I, it, I mean. It, it was not how it was, if you remember. Yeah, I, well, I remember. And I remember that you didn't think that we were going to get it. No. <laughs> I said, we're not going to, this isn't going to work, but we're going to try it. Well, so, yeah, so yeah. far so good. I mean, I'm, he's, I'm tickled to death. He's probably, he's probably toast. If uh, we don't do another point. thing, then I'm happy. Good. Well, I think we so, do have more though. I think, I think we do. I think we still got, still got at least You need a drink, don't you? He's starting to foam in the mouth. Yeah, that's fine. You need to go in. So, yeah, I, oh, awesome. I can show you how to braid awesome. this. Awesome. I've done that in Girl Scouts. Yeah. Okay. So, awesome. yeah, and this this is what I do with my leashes, the, the 20 footers, because it turns it into about a five footer. Yeah. But we'll let, him, we'll let him drag it for now. Can... So that it doesn't. You ready to go in, Bubba? Go. You ready? Whenever they get tangled up, I don't I don't fix it for them. I just let them figure it out. And they, I they, it it gets to the point where they start. Me, because I'll slow you down. They, it gets to the point where they start moving to catch up with you before they actually get tangled up and they end up fixing right. their own problem. Right. So a lot of people will be like, oh, you messed up. And then the dog finds out that if they just lock themselves up, then the human will stop. Right. And that's not the lesson that you want. No. Nope. Wait. Wait. Nope. Nope. Free. Free. That's another good reason for the door thing is it's a really obvious time when the free makes sense. Yep. So, just little tips, but, uh, well, I mean, well, I thank you. Yeah, no worries. It's good to see you again. I know it's been, yeah, it's been a while. It's been a little while. We had a great talk the last time we were here. I remember that. Yeah. I think it was here for like three hours. Oh yeah. Probably. Two and a half. Probably. That's okay. Come here, Bob. We don't have a problem with that. Yeah, no, we had a good conversation. We talked about God and, and how he teaches us how to train dogs. Yep. <laughs> and 42, which is the answer to God, the universe, and everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Douglas Adams. Dolphins. Yes. <laughs> yep. So I'm sure you know how to do this, but I'll show you anyway. Dave, you can get in here and get the get this one on here because I'm eventually going to need to show everybody how to do this. You take a 20-foot long leash, put your hand through the loop, grab the leash, pull it through right and then there's another loop stick your hand through that grab the leash yep. pull it through same thing again and then it's you eventually get to the point to where you get real fast at doing it and you yep. do it all the way down to the end and you will mess it up at some point and it'll be really hard to get it undone you'll have to go through and take the loops back every time but when you get to the end take it over and clip it on itself and then you have a 20 foot leash that gets to be um, I'd say about six foot. Cool. And uh, so you'll mess that up one of these times and then you'll have to go and undo it one loop at a time all the way to the bottom. And I still don't know what I do to mess it up, but I know that I don't do it anymore because my brain chemicals have fixed that problem for me. It's like a Girl I get, Scout I get frustrated thing. enough. Yeah, it's the exact same thing. And then it becomes... And it becomes yeah. very manageable and it doesn't tangle. You can do awesome. anything that you want with it and it will always come to... Right back. To where it's supposed to and then whenever you're ready to use it watch me just we're on video and it won't work oh it there does work and then it just comes all the way up <clears throat> you can also stop halfway through if you want to i'm not going to do it that's justin honey stop but you can stop halfway through and just shorten the leash up by half of it or whatever sure. and all you do in that situation is you just take that last piece when I got it the length that I want, I'm just going to take that last piece and I'm going to actually run the leash through the loop. The whole thing, right. And then it'll tighten back up, but I'm not going to do right. that right now because a lot of times whenever I do that, I end up having to take it apart having one loop at a time. And that's, and that's obnoxious. And I Cool. Thank you. I, so there's Perfect. Your, and that's much more manageable Perfect. than, than, uh, than a 20-foot long dangly, right. tangly, dangly, tangly leash. Absolutely. So, cool. Awesome. Say awesome. that five times fast. Dangly tangly leash, dangly tangly leash, dangly tangly leash, dangly tangly leash, dangly tangly leash. You got it. So, all right. Cool. All right. 
Well, it's great seeing you again. You too. Thank you. And uh, thank you. I hope so, I didn't break so the just, just no, uh, no, absolutely not. You, you're probably in better condition than either one of us. We smell bad. Uh, so uh, I never noticed. We this this goes on to um, YouTube, but it doesn't go on public. Okay. It is only for people who pay, who are Paxsmith members. Okay. That pay uh, the Patreon 